let's talk about that engagement. From your perspective, everything was correct. You teleported, you got the kill. But what does the information that you did that give them? Mm, I won't have TP, I won't have mana, but... Yes, they are absolutely free. He is absolutely free to knock down the mid tower before you even get back. But uh, isn't that test gonna happen every time? Uh, every time and go on, uh, go on in any hero. Yeah, uh, I understand. If it was any other hero, I I'll ob obviously go mid. But since it was Arkwood in his. Uh, uh, doppel, oh, his uh, illusion was also there, so I went there. Plus, I think uh, we, I, I was communicating with LC that let's duel him, or maybe he was diving, I'm, I'm not sure what happened. So, in situations like this, there are two ways you can play it. If the enemy mid laner is someone who will take down towers fast, and there's only a couple of heroes that actually are actually able to take towers fast. That would be like a Broad Mother, Lone Druid, Visage, Death Prophet, Arc Warden, uh, and Dragon Knight. Wind Ranger, Wind Ranger, Dragon Knight. Yeah, yeah, few few heroes. Yeah. So Lone Druid being one of them already alters your game plan. Is that if you absolutely want to take a kill you must have contingencies in place one of them is with their own hero to just run back to the middle ASAP not taking any camps in the in the, in the midway and the better way to, to approach the scenario is to ask one of your supports to sit down the middle while you are performing the gank Lena okay. is, is absolutely perfect for this she can walk there like 30 seconds ago as you were walking to the base you say lena i will teleport top i will try, try to get a gang can you walk to the middle to protect the tower and that way both things are okay. achieved the top gets a kill which is a really good kill because it sets back their carry by quite a lot and the mid tower remains protected the worst case scenario in high mamars as soon as you leave the lane your tower dies and in that case, any kill you have made, if it results in your tower dying, that kill was not worth it. In this match, I'm pretty. I think the Lone Druid did not press the advantage as much as he could, so it kind of worked out. But the general way of thinking is what I have described. Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally, totally. That makes sense. <laughs> You're <laughs> making the same play. Literally the same play. Yeah, yeah. Oh god. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I feel awful about that. And absolutely the same outcome. Well, I mean, you did get the rune this no, time. No, no, no. I, I got the rune, but yeah, I should go on him instead of. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's... Let's skip forward. One more thing about the farming patterns is you're not stacking nearly as much as you could. The only thing you did stack, <laughs> you just got the golems. Yeah. So when do you think I should be stacking? Whenever. As a storm, you have super easy time to just deep pushing the lane and being ready for the stack timers. Okay, so this time uh, I wanted to go top, but since uh, I told LC that I'm coming top, but then I changed changed it because tower was going down. So I do uh, do prioritize tower, but but yeah, last time he was at half HP or something. That's why. I, I gave up. The thing is... But yeah, I should have called Lina. 
the thing is against those little handful of heroes that threaten a mid tower kill you shouldn't be thinking much about going top in the first place your first and foremost priority if you cannot take down the mid tower you protect your tower so top like i said unless there is a hero that can protect it for you like alina the top should not be on your list of priorities okay so say for example lena was uh, not available to um, to come met i should not go to our portal is what you say you should not know okay 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 Against heroes you cannot effectively kill, do not overcommit. In this case, just, uh, just showing up would be enough to force the lone druid to abandon his position and, and fall back. And that would have saved you a lot of mana to continue mm. farming up that orchid. Hmm, okay. This is not good, right? I should just let Lex stand here and go jungle? Exactly. Like, if the enemy heroes can allow themselves to sit in the middle, that means their side lanes are doing extremely well, and they have all the resources to just sit in the middle and protect the tower. So your ideal play is to ideally block the creeps a bit, so that the creeps meet at your high ground, which would make it super easy for you to just wave clear them. And the second best thing is to just let one of the supports take the lane and go full time jungle until your first power spike, which is Orchid. Again, I'm gonna say the same thing, you gotta think about the risk versus reward. Like, what you did is you killed a position 4 hero, which was okay, you successfully killed him. But just think about what would have happened if Disruptor was actually there. He might have glimpsed you into the ultimate. Hell, even Mars comboing the Spear into the arena is deadly for you. Lone Druid, getting a Root plus Fear is deadly for you, like, there are so many things that can go wrong. And you decide to engage on their high ground where you don't have the vision. Mm. Until your first power spike, just farm. With the, lanes, with the lanes like these, where the enemy can so easily join the fights, just... Just don't risk it. Okay. Radiant structures are just what I need. Yeah. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Over here now. Unless you are level twelve, you shouldn't be doing large sips like that. Okay. It's way too wasteful on your mana pool. And any incoming hero will, will punish you for that. If the Disruptor didn't waste his ultimate before, he would be dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, what can you do about... Uh, so you say that... Or even I think that... Uh, Zeus, Sniper are food for Storm. But as soon as my level six hits, if he do, if he doesn't, uh, if Zeus or Storm doesn't have advantage, they will just go in jungle and then keep farming. And at at some point, I can't combo them. If I mean, that that's what happens with me when I'm like 
they will be permanently hidden uh, un until and unless we are winning. There won't be any wards. If I go to ward, uh, I mean, yeah, you, you, even that that doesn't happen because uh, wards, wards won't be available. Since they don't cost money, supports every time they have wards. They don't give me words. So, what do you, what do you, what is your advice for if, that if happens? you're fo if you're forcing them to even go to the jungle, that means the lane is won, and that's already a very very favorable outcome for yourself. And in that case, our game plan is to take down the unprotected mid tower ASAP and then you have all the space in the world all the time in the world to either venture out solo with the wards to hunt them in the jungle set up small gangs with your roamers to kill them in the jungle or just ignore them and take every single mid rune and pressure side lanes if the enemy mid leaves the lane that's it your job is done. You have won. Okay, okay. Hmm. Cool, okay. And that's what you should have done from the moment you have gotten the Orchid. Because as we discussed previously, the mid lane is extremely dangerous, it's well warded because the enemy can afford to stay in the mid lane because there's not much happening in the side lanes. And this automatically tells you that with every additional reinforcement sent to the mid lane, that's one less defense on the side lanes. So what mm. I'm saying is that with this information you had for the past five minutes, you know that Arc Warden will be a kill any single time you step in the top lane. And that's what should be your goal until the enemy fixes that. And the way they will fix that is they will they will see the Arc Warden die once, they will see the Arc Warden die twice, and they, they will start gathering around him to try to protect him. And what that, do, what that does is that shifts the focus from the mid lane to the top lane. And what do you do? Same thing you, you did before. If you see everyone shifting towards another lane, that means the mid lane is free for the taking. Did that make okay. sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think you have all the information on the minimap, on the map right now, to explain to me what would be the correct target to jump on. Disruptor? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we think about it for a little bit, if you think about it for a little bit, you can draw some conclusions about which heroes present a kill threat on you. And Lone Druid or Arc Warden are not those heroes. It's the Earthshaker with the yeah, blink, yeah. Disruptor with the ultimate, or Mars if he gets a jump on you. So. You always keep an eye on the minimap to see if one of the kill conditions, I mean your death conditions, 
are nearby or have ways to be nearby because you have division here because you have ward you have extremely good information that neither Earthshaker neither Mars will get there in time then you also see Disruptor right there and there so the correct play of course is to kill the Disruptor because you know that no other kill conditions that can kill you can arrive before you win this team fight. Hmm. Go, go. Oh yeah, that was a bit unfortunate, but just like we have discussed previously, with all the reinforcements in the middle, anytime you and the gang shows to the top, Arc Warden is dead. The only mistake you did is you didn't catch him before he moved into a more disadvantageous position deeper in his jungle. Yeah. I mean, from now onwards, or maybe even uh, two minutes before, uh, half of my energy was wasted on telling my team how what to do. So, well, I mean, you might understand yourself that that the lone druid, if you are alone, you cannot kill him. Is it so though? He was solo, and you were solo. You cannot kill him. Okay. Even if you get a jump and use your spells, as soon as the bear roots you, you can no longer perform uh, ball jumps, you no longer have the overload procs, so yeah, regardless okay. of whether he can fear you or not, it's still a bad idea. Okay, okay, okay. You gotta stop jumping supports. Jumping supports is only beneficial if the game is going even or you're ahead, since that would make them easy kills and not not put yourself at the risk. But in this game, after what happened in the mid lane, from all those accumulated disadvantages, anytime you jump a support, if you think about it, the rest of their heroes who have a kill threat on you can always initiate and save either save the support or worse kill you so in this match in particular and in other matches where you have significant disadvantage either through the economy or through the draft just stop chasing bad kills That's the second time you have done the zip and teleport back to the base. In and on itself, it is not a bad thing. But when your team is trying to defend the tower from a disadvantage with all, with all their god, you essentially put yourself out of the game for 30 seconds. 
because you need to be recovering from the champ. And what that means is yeah. you cannot join the fight. And your team, which should have advantage because they have the tower hitting the enemy, they should have advantage, but they don't anymore. Because their position 2, which is supposed to be second most farm hero on the map, or at least the hero that can fight, can no longer fight. Do you think that fighting with the team, uh, I mean, face-to-face -face is a correct option here for me? As a... Mm. No, that's because a, that's not, not single hero that uh, even if I silence one hero, vortex the other, uh, the third hero uh, kills me or makes me very low. Yeah, that's that's a separate topic. But in this case, if if you think that fighting entirely is a disadvantage. In that case, instead of putting yourself out of the game with a zip teleport, what you want to do is zip just far enough so that the enemy cannot blink reach you, and then cut okay. the waves. Just cut the waves. Uh, okay, right. That's that's it. You're not committing to the fight, and the enemy can no longer commit to push further than what the creeps allow. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that not makes sense. I mean, the main takeaway is that as soon as you are able to notice that the kill lane is no longer a kill lane. You switch to farm mode. You could have still achieved a pretty good orchid. I would I would say 12 minute orchid. And if you would have pressed the advantage in the top lane with the Lena protecting the middle, you could realistically have reduced their advantage by quite a lot. What are the things you should I I I should be focusing on? Well, there's, there's also lots of minor mana management. Um, I wouldn't say problems, but uh, little moments where mana could have been spent a little bit better. But it's it's not worth it for me to point out every single one because that will come yeah. to practice anyway. But yeah, I think the biggest the biggest ones exactly were the not recognizing when to switch up to make it a farm lane, because that was a lot of net worth wasted there, and then the map movements after it got the Orchid. Okay. That, that alone gave the enemy significant enough advantage that any further outplays which were possible before and when I could have talked about became impossible just simply because the enemy has owned the entire map from that point onwards. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, and, and and of course the usual is the usual thing where storm player sees a support and wants to kill it. Hmm. True, true. And I don't think there was anything else of significance to talk about. Yeah, this I always struggle killing the supports. <clears throat> um. By a struggle, I mean is uh, they always get some item, some defensive item to to, uh, to you know uh, make uh, make me not complete my combo. Yeah, that's that's why it is extremely important to stop chasing supports on a on a losing matches because they will have much easier time protecting against you. Yeah. But like I said, uh, the kill, targeting kill priority is a whole different topic on its own. Can you summarize then what, uh, what area I should be focusing on? Farming? Farming? 
uh, right right target yeah that that would be not focusing on the farming as much as you should of course the engaging the wrong targets and in general okay. you need you need to be thinking way more about the concepts like uh, risk versus reward what your next move should be how display what kind of information does display give the opponents like from the part where i said you, you went top and then your mid tower was open for taking okay 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 then thank you okay until next time yeah sure sure